coming out. Good morning, welcome. We're waiting for some more people to join. We're gonna give it about three more minutes and then we'll get this going today. Thank you very much. Welcome. Okay, we're going to get started in one more minute. Thank you, everyone. start it now. Um, we're all working from home today. We have plenty of, um, you know, we have, we're, we have family members connected. We have multiple people working at home. We are using spaces in the house that we weren't using before. So today we're going to talk about how to keep us best connected practices for keeping our homes connected while we're working from home, taking school from home, doing whatever we need to be productive while we're home. A little background on us, the company, and me. Um, Integrated Technology Systems has been an IT provider since the mid-90s. I'm the CEO of Integrated Technology Systems. We refer to ourselves as ITS. I've been working with computers since the 1980s. Yes, it makes me a little older than I'd like to admit. I like, I definitely love technology as I've had my own house. I have connected devices. I have cameras, I have speakers. I look last night and I realized I have 48 devices connected in my home with between um, my children's computers, tablets, iPhones, iPads, Apple watches. Sonos speakers, TVs, um, cameras. Um, ten, 10 years ago, we'd walk into a 10 or 12 person company and we wouldn't have that many devices on the network. So obviously our homes are a lot more connected than we ever had in the past. And that connectivity is important to keep all those devices connected. So what are some of the challenges we have today? As I just said, everyone needs connectivity. Video conferencing, which a number of years ago we could not imagine, is now the new norm, especially in this COVID world. We, we use Zoom, we use Teams, we, um, my kids use Google's product, and they're all on video conferencing. Requires bandwidth, requires connectivity. If there's a weak spot, video conferencing is going to show it right now. And every room in our house needs that connectivity. We have a spot in the house where, you know, we have that room where, ah, don't worry about it, nobody uses it. Well, now we're all using those spaces. So we need connectivity or we put a Peloton in some place and we, which also needs connectivity or we've done something else. So we have, as I said, all these devices, cameras, speakers, exercise equipment, everything. And we need to make sure it all stays connected. Well, part of the challenge here is 
we don't, not everyone is technical like I am. I mean, this stuff is what I do for a living. It's what my interest is. I understand how to get it all connected. And there's a lot of hodgepodge solutions out there that don't necessarily work reliably or we have need help. And at times we call our internet provider spectrum or files or whatever else, and there are limited help on getting these pieces connected to our house. So typically in our house or in our apartment, um, we would, a lot of times we have the cable company as our internet provider. So, excuse me, cable company would typically install cable where our TV was, which was our living room, family room, or someplace like that in the house. And that's when you first got internet in the house, they would install our cable modem at that spot in the house. And then we'd have Wi-Fi and great, we have Wi-Fi in the living room. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean we've got it on the third floor of the house or for an apartment across the apartment, another room. And we've got these spots where we have limited connectivity, no connectivity, connectivity that goes out and we, um, and we, for instance, we want to install cameras outside of our house. So we need to expand the connectivity in the house. So you'll see Wi-Fi one is a representation in this picture of where our connection is. So how do we do that today? Um, I would say to you what most people don't understand, if we have wired connections and we can connect things wired, we should. It's still the most reliable way to connect things. I'm a wired connection generally when somebody says an ethernet connection in your house. So if you can connect equipment to your router via a wired connection, you absolutely should. If your internet provider has a um, option, for instance, my New York City apartment, we have a coax extender from Verizon for our wireless uses the coax cable in our house, allows us to extend the files into our kid's room, which had already had cable TV in it and allowed us to use that and it created one seamless connection. But the funniest part was I had to specifically go on the website and look for that and ask for that. And they installed it and it works great. So that's one option. The other option, which is a lot of what we're gonna spend our time talking about today is what they call now mesh networks. So mesh network is different than a Wi-Fi extender. The difference would be is a lot of times we'd go into the store and we'd see this net um, Wi-Fi extender, we'd connect it and I can't tell you how many calls we got it and said, you know, I bought this extender to connect my kid's room or some other place and that kind of doesn't work. Well, the truth is the Wi-Fi extender actually uses the same connectivity that you use for your Wi-Fi to extend the connection and actually drops your connection in half. For the most part, they don't work. I tried it myself. The area where the extender is in the house gets some connectivity, but very slow speeds. Um, a lot of the companies have now created what they call mesh networks. And it's basically, you have to buy from the same manufacturer, from the same equipment, and basically the mesh network connects all the pieces in your house together. And you can create a hub and spoke. So you can start out with connections in your, where you were talking about in your living room and then put one maybe on the second floor of your house. And then if you need connectivity on the third floor, the one on the first floor will connect from the first floor to the second and then to the third floor. So it basically allows us to really connect our house and make a connection properly. So this is a diagram of it. And this is what I was kind of getting to and I used the diagram before with the pieces blurred out. So we would start with Wi-Fi one. We would put a connection in place. We would then put a mesh unit on the second floor, which the first mesh unit and second one would connect up. And then we would add a third one on the third floor of the house. And that would allow us to connect all three floors together and the units would all talk to each other and we'd be able to see 
what type of connection we have in the house. So I went, we have some stuff in our house and I went and set up a mesh network actually yesterday to kind of talk through this. And I'm gonna walk you guys through what all this is. So the company, our company goes to for a lot of these home setups is Eero. They've been around for a while. All they do is Wi-Fi setups. They're now owned by Amazon. The product is a really well integrated product and automatically updates and it's managed all through your mobile phone. So you'll see, I got the box. I opened the box up. There was two units in it. The second unit is a extender, a mesh extender in their system. So it's different than a wireless. It's all built in as an integrated piece. You'll see a screenshot from my phone where you turn around, you add the device and you go through the wizard and it adds the Wi-Fi pieces to your network and configures the network. Well, one of the things we need to talk about when we're doing this is to make sure that our Wi-Fi is secure. So we're gonna go talk about that. Um, one of the things I always say when you're doing Wi-Fi is make sure the name is generic. Make sure it's recognizable that you know what it is, not like something like the cell phone, like the typical carriers will do. You can do a generic letter or something, but nobody knows what it is. Excuse me. For instance, I did mine where I have my street name, but I don't have my street number. So I know it's mine, but nobody knows what street it is or I'm in, on this, in New York City, I did the same thing. So yeah, it's got something that I can recognize, but it's not specific to me. So I would not recommend putting the Smith family or the Cooper Smith family as my name, Wi-Fi name. Okay, set up your, um, your Wi-Fi with a secure password. You make sure the password is something that you have. Um, you can, you, I will send you a link. I should have put that in the webinar. You can actually build out a little cue cards for people to scan it. And the other thing we probably all talk about, we see which we don't use enough of is the guest network. So we, we have a guest come over, we have family members come over and they say, hey, what's your Wi-Fi? And we give them the Wi-Fi to our house. Well, that allows them from their devices to see everything in the house, which most of our people are genuine. They're not looking to do harm. But what if there's something on their device? Now they can, if their device is compromised, your house is compromised. By setting up a guest network, you segment the data on your network from your home and what you have in your house and what your guests can do. Your guests can still get to the internet. They can still browse, they can still do all that stuff. They just can't get to all the home devices on your network. And some people say some of these, um, what they call IoT devices, cameras, other stuff that are basically needing internet probably should be on the guest network as well because they really don't need to browse all the activity in your house. So there we are. This is once we complete all those pieces, we now have a connected house. We have all our connectivity. We have it secure. We are able to go about our stuff. And basically, we have a nice connected home where we can work from. So one of the other pieces while I'm talking about Wi-Fi is what do we talk about while you're outside of your home? So, you know, one of the things I'm surprised uh, um, I talk to people about when we do corporate educations is about public hotspots. So going on a public hotspot, really, if you got a cell phone and you got cellular activity is what I would say is a no, no, should not be done. People can browse what you do on the hotspot. People can make a tax on the, from the hotspot to you, into your device. You really are on the compromise portion of being connected and having issues. So if you have cellular connectivity, use the cellular. If you need to use a hotspot, such as you're staying in a hotel and there's no connectivity, 
use a VPN encryption service. If that you're looking for some, we can make some recommendations for you, but really then your data is encrypted, your computer is not seen, and you can use the hotspot. If you need to connect your computer out in the world and you are need connectivity and you, most of our phones can act as a hotspot if you have the proper subscription. So I, for instance, have worked in a hotel for four or five days and never connected to the Wi-Fi in the hotel and just use my hotspot as my connectivity. I've been able to do video calls. I've been able to do all my emails, all my production work. I just had to watch a little bit of my data usage and couldn't watch movies while I was on the hotspot because we are charged a data fee for that connection. So that's really what it takes to get us you connected all at home and make sure that you have all the proper pieces. So the webinar was short. I hope you got enough value. We'll take some questions in a second. And next week, we're going to discuss uh, um, next Tuesday at the same time, 11 a.m., we're going to discuss how to keep your personal data safe. We're going to talk about multi-factor authentication on your Google accounts, on your Outlook accounts, how really you need to keep your personal data safe. A lot of people on, are surprised, you know, they have their Google account with the password of their child, and they have a lot of secure data in those accounts. So we're going to discuss that next week on our call. And if anybody has any questions, they can use the little Q&A piece in the thing to ask any questions. And we'll leave it open for another minute if there's any questions. Or then put their hand up in the app and we will unmute you. Okay. Thank you everyone for your time. We appreciate it. Um, thank you again. Have a wonderful day and thank you again.